ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Shit's about to hit the fan. Welcome to Unsanctioned Thursdays on Wrestling with Freddy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show that you asked for, you got, because you created it. It is Unsanctioned Thursdays. The only thing you didn't get to do was name it. Uh, we got to do that. Sorry, it's our show. But it's your show, too. Welcome back, Mr. Jeff Dye. How are you today, sir? Feeling real good. Got my LWO shirt on. Ready to oh, rock. Yeah, you do. Most Latin man in wrestling. Amen. So we're going to answer a couple questions. I won't be able to answer all of them because some of them don't apply. But uh, I also wanted to give an update on my own federation because I didn't do that last week. So here's where we're at. I will, once the whole process is is over and done with, whether I, I succeed or not, I'll let you guys know everywhere I pitched. I won't give like executives names, but I'll let you know the companies I pitched to and how receptive I felt they were to the to the process. Um, but in the meantime, I I, I don't want to say that yet because I don't want to put weird pressure on people or throw people under a bus and make them feel like I'm shitting on them because I'm not. This is just the business and it's how it goes. I have one no for sure, which I said a couple weeks ago. They came back and said it. I didn't like the way they said no. It was very like, We'd love the show if it was already made. Come come back to us when it's made and we'll give it another shot. I'm like, well, if I'm going to do that, I'll be what? somewhere else. So, yeah, so thanks for that. About? It was like the music business where they're like, yeah, when you have a million followers, we'd love yeah. to sign you. And the it's musician's like, like why, why do I need you then? Yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah, Shark, like Shark, Tank. Shark Tank. You bring them an idea. They say, uh, so what are your numbers? And you're like, well, I haven't made many. You know? And they're like, well, 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 why would we invest? You're like, because I need you. I need you to, to, you're like, this is the idea phase. If I was that selling was kind of billions, of <laughs> I wouldn't be on Shark Tank, stupid. If I was selling billions, <laughs> I'd be, I wouldn't need you. So that was the first place. The second place I pitched were very, very receptive. And they came back a second time and started asking finance questions and then came back a third time and asked for a few weeks because their company's going through like a restructurement at the moment. I don't know if restructurement's a word, but it is today. So I have to wait for them if I, if I want to get a yes from them and I'm happy to do that. The third place I went to was another really, really good meeting. And I can't say too much about them or people figure out who they are, but it's still, I thought maybe they didn't like it, but then I heard the meeting went really well and it's still very much in play. They just need more time. And then I was told that this form of television takes much longer than the movie businesses. So I was feeling really down about the show. And then I got all these updates. I was like, okay, cool. I'm still alive at two places. And then the fourth place did not get the pitch. I will go as far as say did not like the pitch. I'm not sure why they took the meeting. She was very, very polite and nice. And they do have cool shows on TV. I've seen some of their stuff, but they don't want this show. And they haven't said no yet, but they're going to say no. So that's the update to this point on my federation. And, and I'll also tell you guys the name of it and everything about it, whether it, gets, whether it gets sold or not, once the process is over and done with. But that's where I'm at with the show. And with that, we are going to get to your questions. Here we go. I won't be able to answer all these. We got a guy named Chris Struck 05 on Instagram. And he wanted to know if I ever worked with the great Melina when she was still in WWE. I only got to work with Melina once and it was just for a quick thing. I think the producer of her segment said he had food poisoning. He was really hung over, but he said he had food poisoning. He, he tapped out and they needed someone to jump in and, and my segment was already done. I think I had something with Kane. I, I can't remember exactly. This is over a decade ago. And I'm just trying to think of the wrestlers I was working with at that time. They go, could you please just write like a one-liner for Melina? And I think it was, she was cutting it to an evil Beth Phoenix and she was a, a good guy, good girl Melina. And it was going to be after the match. And I remember being like, people always sound better when they're out of breath. So even though we have like 10 seconds to do this, I think it might work. And so I went up to her and I was like, hey, they want to give you a line at the end of the match. And I don't remember her response. I don't remember if she was nervous or excited. But we went over what it was and and talked. It was just like a small line. I was like, you, you, you may be the glamazon, but I'll be damned if you're glamorous. I don't remember. I don't remember. Something like that. I worked on it with her. And uh, so we got the line and she went in. She had a great match. The finish looked super, super clean. And she grabbed the mic and like from hanging on the ropes, totally out of breath. So you could hear it like, like Mark Wahlberg in every scene of every movie ever out of <laughs> breath. This is why it sounds so cool. Because it's like, did you not hear what I said? If you're not listening, I'm going to tell you right now. You're just like, dude, he's so intense. So she Very sounded active, super intense you know? and and cut the line and it went really well. But that's the only time I can remember, remember working with Melina. But she was super cool. She was there the whole time I worked there. 
All right, Jeff, we need to talk about something that I think you and I feel the same about. And I don't know how many minds we're going to be able to change, but I want to try. And I want to talk about online tribalism because I think it only exists online in wrestling. And the people, meaning the people that say you can only like this or this, you can only like WWE or you, and you can only like AEW. I met a couple of these dudes at, at the Chicago Comic Con convention. It was called C2E2. And they're like, no, I will not watch. AEW. And I was like, oh man, you missed out on this sick match with Brian Danielson and Will Ospreay. And they were like, oh, well, oh, well I like those guys. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, man, you got to watch the match, dude. Yeah, they're like, in AEW. Trip. So you like so, AEW. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I know this exists online. And so before you and I get into it, and you'll have probably a stronger opinion on this than I even do, I want you guys to remember something. The online world, while entertaining and popular, is the minority opinion, not the majority opinion, because not enough people are on social media, not as many people as you think, regardless of the millions and millions that are on there. There's just too many people on earth and they don't care. When you want to get action on a YouTube video or a social media post, it is much more likely to get action or traction is a better word if it's inciting anger or frustration than if it's just celebrating something you did. Mm. So a lot of people are motivated for that. Thirdly, a lot of people have found a way to monetize opinion-based stuff, i.e. podcasts about wrestling. You will see that the more shocking stuff people say or the more aggressive they are tend to get, especially if you're a podcaster, tend to get more of a response than your podcast where you're just talking about stuff you love. That's real. And that happens too. So take tribalism with a grain of salt. Like Star Wars still made money regardless of the tribalism that existed. DC movies and Marvel movies still make money regardless of the tribalism that existed. If they just follow the comic book storylines, I mean, why would you buy it if you didn't like the stories in the first place? It's okay. Hmm. They're allowed to change it. It sucked for you. You don't have to like it, but it's okay. They bought it. If the creator wasn't okay with it, the creator wouldn't have sold it. Like everything's going to be all right. Well, the right hand of Hellboy's that was the stone fist is now the left one. That injustice video game sucks. Well, what do you want Mike Mignola to do, man? He's got to make money somehow. They licensed his character. If he's okay with it, you be okay with it. Mm -hmm. I don't see any room in the world for tribalism. I feel people have missed out on so many awesome storylines and awesome matches in professional wrestling because of this, that it's completely ridiculous philosophy philosophy to me. I never attack these guys with hate. I always try to go, oh, dude, you missed out on this and try to get them hyped up and excited. But I don't know. Maybe there's a better way to do it. Am I underselling the problem of tribalism? Is it bigger than I think? Or or what are, what are your thoughts on this? You, I think you're in you the nailed social it. media world. I think you nailed it. I think that it goes bigger. I think it's even bigger. I think tribalism is just, it's very natural, but I think it's very immature. We live in a, in a world of people who they think, Oh, I hate cats. I'm a dog guy. I'm a dog guy. I'm a dog guy. (laughs) Guess what, buddy? You can like cats and dogs. Hating cats doesn't make your love of dogs greater. You can like both. And I think that this came, I learned, I kind of experienced this with maturity, like just getting older. I was like, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. People go, oh, the XFL, that's garbage. The XFL. I'm like, dude, it's just more football. They're not taking away the NFL. If they were taking away the NFL, I'd go, good for you. Let's, let's protest, you know, let's protest the XFL. But it's just more football. And I think that our producer, Alex, I watch him have meltdowns on Twitter about it all the time. It's like, It's just more wrestling. It's more work for wrestlers who we love. It's more stories which we want to see. And it's it's just more opportunity. I wouldn't care if there was a 24-hour wrestling thing in every single city because we want more wrestling. So the tribalism, you can pick favorites. Favorites are fine. I do it all the time. But you don't need to go, oh, this is garbage and this is bad. It's like, relax. Let's have it all. The more, the merrier. And I think the more, the quicker people learn that, the quicker they can grow up and enjoy how much good stuff we have. Yeah, man. 
I just, I wonder if that damn heart button, that like button is what got people so black and white on art. Like if you don't press the heart button, then that means you don't agree and you must hate it. Yeah. Instead of going, no, it just didn't affect me one way or the other. There, yeah. I felt gray about it. I, not me, gray. I thought it was cool. But I wasn't motivated to go, wow, I love this or write a comment. Well, then you hate you hate it and you hate what I did. No, no. I just I thought it was cool. And I think that's I I think that that heart button has really damaged. I just don't say the word damage, Freddie. People get their feelings hurt by that. But but I, I just think it's cheated the younger generations out of enjoying art the way artists originally meant to. There was never like anyone outside of a Picasso gallery protesting because they liked Modigliani more like yeah. this is this is post-world war post-renaissance like art right like it just wasn't like that and there were critics back then too so you know if you don't like something like there's people that literally like go out of their way to try to say bad things about wwe or aew in the hopes that the companies fail and it's like to why would why why would you want that like the wrestlers that you like don't want that to happen they go to each other's shows and visit ricky starks and dusty and dustin rhodes were at mania supporting cody rhodes bailey has has traveled and, and gone to 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 see mercedes monet i think it was so like if they're cool with it i think that's letting them give you an opportunity to be cool with it and like i said i don't know if i'm gonna change your mind you the listener not you jeff i know you I don't know if I'm going to change your mind, but if you're even going, yeah, you're kind of an ass, Freddie, but maybe like you're right on the maybe wrong on the ass. I'm not, but you're right, but you're right on the maybe. And you should just check out a couple matches. There's going to be stuff you don't like. There's stuff I don't like on both shows. What am I going to do? Not watch either one? No, no. I'm going to watch both and just enjoy the stuff I dig. If you'd have ever told me that people would be complaining about too much Batman and too much Star Wars and too much Marvel, I would tell you you're insane. I'd be like, that. what are you talking about? More is is better. The things we used to fantasize as kids, uh, like we would be like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if they made a wrestling video game where you could, and then now that we just have it. Remember we used to go, oh, what if they did a Mortal Kombat game where you had all, that we have it all. Everything we've always fantasized as like 80s and 90s kids, we got it. So, and now we have it and we complain, oh, they didn't do it. It's like, it's so selfish. When, we, when WCW was feuding with WWE, it was like the greatest thing. We called the Monday Night Wars like one of the greatest chapters of wrestling. And now we have NXT, WWE, AEW, TNA. Right? You're starting a Fred. We're, like, we're going to have so many things. And it's like I don't see why people are bitching about it. It makes no sense. Two things to close the show. One, I promise you guys I will not call my Fed the Federation. That's just like a little term of endearment we use here on the show. I would never do that. Two, the only fantasy that we never got was, and that's in the movies, is the DC Marvel showdown. Whose heroes are better? And it'll never happen. It'll Because nobody wants to say that their guy's lost. Nobody wants to say, oh, Iron Man could beat Batman in a fight. Like the Warner Brothers execs would be like, no, Batman wins. And the Disney execs, no, I, and they'd never be able to come around to it. We got like a little bit in the comic book world where they're like, hey, you do one for us, we'll do one for you, like pro wrestlers. But no way will that fantasy ever come true in the movies. You're never going to see Wolverine versus anyone in the DC universe. And that fantasy still needs to come true. And it never will, Jeff. Mm. Never will. <laughs> I'm going to start a YouTube channel about it. All right. Any closing thoughts, sir? Um, Just love all the wrestling. That's what I say. You can be a little, little judgmental piggy like I am sometimes where I go, I don't like him. But it's just I... I I've tried to make this clear on the episodes before, and I, I don't. I'll say it every week if I have to. I like all the wrestlers, but I like to say that I don't like this guy and I like this guy. But I still love it. If they're in wrestling, I love it. It's just me criticizing the things in the thing that I love. Is all. It's not just that too. Like you. Here's the cool thing about you, Jeff, and we'll close on this. You love the big guys, mm -hmm. but your favorite style of wrestling is the little guys when they fly around yeah. so it's like you got it, both ends of the spectrum and everything in between so i agree with you man we both love wrestling we hope you guys do too tune in every week make sure you share the podcast with friends if they like wrestling tell them to come give us a listen keep giving those reviews we'll read them on the air uh whether they're mean or bad although it's or, or nice i mean but it seems like only the nice ones are getting through so ha 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 all you jerks that thought you were going to get on the air you didn't 
On behalf of Jeff Dye, I'm Freddie Prince Jr. Tune in every week. I'm just kidding. Even the jerks. I love you. Peace. <laughs> this has been a production of iHeart's My Cultura Podcast Network. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. Hold up. 